Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Episode. I'm Barry P. Cook. I'm here to talk to you about the latest episode of Titans. It was called Dude, Where's My Gar? Which, of course, is a play on the title of the film, Dude, Where's My Gar? The episode opens on a young gar at the zoo being approached by a zookeeper as he's sitting on a bench, seemingly sad, before she leaves to go make an announcement to help him find his parents as he becomes upset. And then he seems to be telepathically connected to some gorillas, and he gets disturbing visions of them being worked on by zoo doctors or whatever. And then we flash to present day Gar, who is in some kind of red energy field, which I guess is the red, and being spoken to by someone named Dominic, who is telling him that he's the protector of the red. He then comes out of it and finds himself in a cave at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, and being approached by what looks like a griffin, but which is apparently a bat lion, and Dominic, who tells him that not only did he pull him out of the red, but that he is one with all animals that breathe and bleed, as well as that he is Gar's freedom. Gar, of course, wants to go home, but he can't enter the red, which Dominic explains is a force that connects all life in the universe and many others that every beating heart flows into and that only so many people can manipulate. So uh, it's kind of like the force force. Dominic tells Gar that he needs his help, which Gar says he's happy to give in the future, but that he needs to get back to his friends presently. Just then a couple of soldiers attack and Dominic kicks their asses before telling Gar that gorillas were taken from the jungle and are being dissected while still alive for some reason. And that this is what he needs Gar's help with. Apparently, Dominic is Freedom Beast, a character from DC Comics, who at one point acquired a special life-lengthening and super-strength-giving helmet from someone named Mike Maxwell. Dominic then gives Gar an elixir that will allow him to see his truth, I guess, and also allow him to travel back through the red in mere moments after he stops the gorilla murdering lab. When he drinks it, it seems to take him back in time in his mind where he meets another version of himself driving the van as well as Rachel. But then he's right back in the cave where he sees a vision of his younger self and again, Rachel. Then he seems to be back at Star Labs and is talking with Jinx, who acknowledges being, well, not dead, but only mostly dead again. Then he's back in the cave where Freedom Beast shows him visions of all the other people throughout history and who have been able to or who can currently access the red across space and time. Then Gar's at the zoo, seeing his younger self interact with the zookeeper. Then he's back in the cave again, at which point Freedom Beast tells him that they can go on their mission now to save the gorillas, which for some reason they do in an antique Land Rover. Then they infiltrate the lab and kick a bunch of ass in a fight during which Gar turns into a gorilla, then a bird, and then a tiger, as he and Dominic take down a bunch of troopers who for some reason don't fire their guns for the first several minutes of the fight. The scientist there then tells Dominic and Gar that the one gorilla left alive from all the ones they've captured, which is right there on the table, is infected with a mutated version of anthrax, which Dominic says is because of the scientist guy, whom he then fuses with the dying gorilla so that he also dies. Apparently, this lab was operating under the control of Niles Calder from Doom Patrol, who apparently released the disease that killed Gar's family on purpose in an effort to try to access the red. We then find out though that the lab was destroyed years ago by Dominic and then what we just saw was Gar experiencing an echo of the past through the red. Dominic then tells Gar that he is the true protector of the red again and that he can release Dominic from his duties by taking up his role and in fact that he must. So Gar agrees to do so but not before he goes back to his friends and helps save the world from Mother Mayhem which he travels through the red in order to go do, but once again, winds up with his younger self at the zoo, whom he comforts by telling him that he's eventually going to find friends and family and will never be alone. After which he goes back into the red, which he then turns green as the flash runs by him for some reason, the CW flash, the Arrowverse flash. And when he makes contact with Flash's lightning, he's knocked out of the red onto Stargirl's earth. He talks with her for a few minutes, which was cool. It was great seeing her again, but he then re-enters the red, which is now purple, and he starts flying through it before coming out of it at a place where he can see all of the various Earths, an apparently swamp thing through a window into one of them. 
and Shazam in a window into the other, the Zach Levi version. And Lex Luthor from, I think, Lois and Clark in another one of them, who can also see Gar. And then he sees his cartoon self in another one, and he hears Harley Quinn from the animated show, currently on HBO. And he hears Dr. Fate from another, and also the Glenn Ford version of Jonathan Kent from the 1978 Superman film, as well as Joker from the 66 universe. And finally, a vision of Dominic back in the cave. When he comes out of it, he lands in the Doom Patrol mansion where he encounters Cyborg, who still has his tech. So it would seem to be in the past. And that's where the episode ended. And I have to say, I didn't think this was any great shakes as an episode. But it was a great character development episode for Gar, which really should have occurred during season two at the latest. And it's really sad that it didn't. And it's sad that it's occurring now when there are, after this episode, only three left in the whole series. Uh, it's so crazy that they didn't do this earlier. Also, the Stargirl crossover that we've been hearing about for so long was just this friggin' two-minute cameo in which she didn't do anything. And, and that really bites my ass because Stargirl deserved better. I mean, it was cool to see Gar turn into a couple of animals. The sequence where he's seeing and hearing characters from the different parts of the multiverse spanning, you know, from as far back as 1966 to, I guess, the current season or a recent season of the Harley Quinn animated show. That was pretty cool. But other than that, this episode was a big time waster at this stage of the game where there are, you know, now three episodes left. And they could have spent this time, I don't know, fighting the main villain. It, it's, it, I don't know. It was a weird choice for them to do this episode now. I think it might have worked better as a B-plot stretched out over the last two episodes and an episode this week that dealt with the main story and maybe one next week if it took that many. I don't think they should have dedicated an episode to it in the middle of this very short second half of a season. I don't know. It's just a weird thing. But I am interested to see what it has to do with Doom Patrol or what's going to happen with the Do Doom Patrol now that Beast is in the mansion seemingly in the past. So I guess maybe next week we'll see that. But then does that mean they're still not going to be covering the main plot? And then that they'll only have two episodes left to do that? Wow, that would be very bad. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to get out of here for now. I'll be back with more content soon. Until I return, I wish you peace and long life.